If you ask me, one of the neatest new features about the iPhone 4S is Siri Dictation. Now, Siri Dictation is simply a rebranded version of Nuance's Dragon Dictation. Now, Nuance has been working on their speech-to-text technology for decades, and they've really perfected it. It's really especially good with a microphone that's of decent quality. And as many of you know, with the iPhone 4S, it packs a very good microphone, making speech-to-text recognition something that's very plausible. With these tips, you can dictate not just a sentence, but whole paragraphs, even complete emails or novels without ever having to touch this keyboard. That being said, though, unlike a human, Nuance's Dragon Dictation and Siri Dictation can't recognize basic speech um, speech things that we do in day-to-day -day life. For example, it doesn't recognize pauses, and it doesn't know to insert a colon or a comma or a period where you do pause. And so we're going to have to dictate that and learn a couple nuances, pun intended, to get uh, things to work harmoniously and grammatically correctly. So let's get started. For the basic stuff like periods, exclamation points, question marks, commas, semicolons, and colons, all you have to do is say the name of that actual symbol and it will insert itself into the text. So for example, you could say, hello, comma, I think we're going to go with the following recipe, colon, two eggs, comma, cheese, comma, and iguanas, period. This works great, semicolon, however, comma, I'm not sure the dog will like it, exclamation point. Now that's great, as you can see, it's very darn accurate. Check this out, see how there's a little blue squiggly under that? That means it's not absolutely sure what you said, and it thinks that it might be one of two things. So if you click the blue line, you can say, you can see that it says, okay, we thought it was he wants or it wants, but it might also be iguanas. So if iguanas is indeed what you need to see, click that and it will fix it, which is very nice to see as well. So if you see a blue squiggle under it and it's not the right line, it's because you said something that sounds drastically like another word and it'll put what it thinks you said uh, before it'll put something that's not used very often. So that's the basic stuff. Let's move on to something that's a little bit trickier, like quotations. Now, to quote something, you have to say, quote, then what you need quoted, and then at the end, say, end quote. So, for example, you could say, a great man once said, comma, quote, cap, stay hungry, comma, stay foolish, period, end quote. Now, as you can see, as you can see uh, I said cap, stay hungry, and that's because that's something we're going to talk about here in just a second. But as you can see, that's grammatically dead on, and uh, it did everything I told it to with the quote ending once I said end quote. So let's move to the next one, which is capitalization. Now, this gets a little bit harder because you capitalize a lot of different things in a lot of different contexts. With a regular capitalization, with a proper name or at the beginning of a sentence or the beginning of a paragraph, this will take care of it for you. So you don't have to say cap every time you start a new sentence. It does it automatically. It'll also capitalize anyone who's in your contacts or any proper names, states, countries, anything of that nature. However, if you need to capitalize something that is often not capitalized, then you're going to have to say cap before you say the word. So for example, this iPhone was designed by cap Apple in Cupertino, California, period. Now it's going to capitalize Cupertino and California because those are proper names. But had I not said cap before Apple, it would not capitalize. So that's something that you need to know. Now this is where cap gets a little bit tricky. What if you uh, need to capitalize a word that sounds much like a word that has cap in it? So for example, if you needed to capitalize sure, if you say cap sure, it sounds like capture and captain or something of that nature. So what you need to do if you have a word that sounds like it might conflict, you'll need to say cap next and then the word. Now this is not gonna be a grammatically uh, correct sentence because I simply can't think of one right now, but what you could say is, that sounds good, semicolon, cap next, sure, let's do it. Now as you can see, it capitalized sure. Had I not said cap next, sure, it would say, that sounds good, semicolon, cap sure, let's do that next week. I actually said capture quite close together. I wouldn't have said that normally, but as you can see, um, that's how it'll it'll format things. So if you need something that sounds like cap, then do cap next rather than the singular cap. However, for every everything else, cap will work just fine.
Now, if you need to capitalize a title, for example, you can say cap on and cap off. Now, this works great for book titles and everything because it's not going to capitalize every single word. It only capitalizes words that it knows should be capitalized in a sentence or in an, a title. So, for example, I could say cap on a long way gone, semicolon, memoirs of a boy soldier, cap off. Now, as you can see, it didn't capitalize of or a because it knows that's not how it's actually supposed to be. Pretty darn cool. Now, what if I want to capitalize every single letter? All I have to do is say all caps on. So, all caps on, OMG, period, I hate you, exclamation point, all caps off. There we go. Now, what if you need to start a new paragraph? All you have to do is say new paragraph. So, you could say... Jacob, comma, this meeting time sounds good, period. New paragraph, let's cover the basics, comma, shall we, question mark? There you go, pretty darn cool. Next, what if you need to insert a symbol? There's a myriad of different symbols that Siri and Dragon Dictation will interpret. So for example, percent sign, copyright sign, registered sign, section sign, dollar sign, degree sign, carrot, at sign, Pound sterling sign, pound sign. It will insert all of those into the text. So if, for example, you need a pound, just say pound, and it'll insert the symbol, which is pretty darn cool. This is the last one, and it's to insert an ellipsis, or a dot, 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 as it's more commonly known. Well, all you have to do is say dot, dot, dot. Thanks for watching, period. If you're cool, subscribe, comma, thumbs up, comma, and comment on this video, period. If not, comma, well, dot, dot, dot. Thanks for watching, folks. Stay snazzy.